Corey Stokes from long range for a three. That's how much Villanova leads George Mason by with 11 and a half to play in the first half. All right. Of course, uh, later today, Ohio State will be on that floor in Cleveland. Let's take a look at the Capital One Cup impact performance. And what an impact Matt Fogrits had. Splashing the three at the defensive end, anticipating and then finishing. He was really the catalyst. Backdoor cut, smart play, impactful play. That's the Capital One Cup impact <laughs> performance. I think you could find like any one of six or seven Michigan players. Without question. You know, but, today. He was, but he was the ring leader. He would get the marquee. Smotrich ties it up. The arrow stays at this end of the floor. You got six Wolverines right now, Clark, that have somewhere between eight and 14 points. From Morris, the floor general who has an 8.9 assist game going. How about 19 assists on 31 total made baskets for Michigan? Kenny, was that field? That was Kenny Hall. Kenny Hall, I'm sorry, not Fields. Kenny Hall that banged that one in. That breaks almost an eight minute stretch without a, a hoop by the ball. Very impressive performance from about the seven minute mark of that first half, right, Jim, is when Michigan kind of turned things around drastically. From 23 to 17 down. Yeah, right. Minus six to up 28. Hardaway blocked. Shot clock. They beat it in time as Hardaway follows it up. How about the poise there? He knew exactly how much time he had. Never rushed and got it off in plenty of time to get it up and down. And Harris still has not scored in the second half. Never would have believed that with the way this game started. No. He's 0 for 5 from the field in the second half. After being perfect in the first half. You look at this Michigan team, and obviously they'll go on to beat the winner of our next ball game, Duke and Hampton. If you even look ahead to next year with the makeup of this team, no seniors, I think this kid's going to be an outstanding player in this system. A big guy that can step out and make the three-point shot, who also is crafty enough to finish around the goal. I anticipate he's going to make a big jump going into his sophomore year. Tatum at the other end. Now this is going to be a really good Michigan team coming up next year as everyone comes back. Timeout Michigan. Time out, Michigan. To the benches. 30 point difference. Unbelievable. Everything is for sale. Nothing is left to being off limits on True TV's number one hit show. Hardcore Pawn. You won't believe what's in store. Every Tuesday, 9 p.m. on True TV. Fertile Steen on the floor for the first time for Michigan. As is Esso Apune. We're here with the ball right now. He's going to take the three. And Kleiman's back on the floor. John Horford seeing action too, number 15. And not to overlook Corey Persson, so get in the record book as participants in an NCAA tournament game. Deron Maiman on the floor for Tennessee, he too, playing first action along with Jordan McRae of the Balls. Well, I don't know where this is going with Coach Pearl, but, you know, come Tuesday, it became a very public issue. And now with this performance today, and again, I'm sure people will be talking about it, speculating, and he'll be answering questions about how much of an influence, negative influence that all that have on his team today. But that meeting about the future of the program, it certainly got accelerated. Oh, yeah. It's going to be, oh, yeah. you question. know, yeah. the fact that we're into the season, and that season's coming to an end after the first game. And that'll 
send Maiman to the line for the Volunteers. Again, an Elite Eight team a year ago. Sweet 16, four of the last six. Bruce Pearl, who has uh, taken this program to the NCAA tournament, six for six. And graduated all of his four-year players yep. that ever played for him. Well, there's no question he's done a, an outstanding job in a number of ways and a major mistake leaves his future in jeopardy. Well, this is going to be one of the ugliest results in the history of an 8-9 matchup. You just don't see it. It should be, in theory, the most evenly matched game of the round. But it's blowout city here. Michigan did not even make a free throw today. Didn't need it. 36-point swing over the final 26 minutes. Coach Beeline's Wolverines move on to Sunday in Charlotte. Today, under 14 minutes left, Stu Douglas finding Jordan Morgan, and Michigan goes on to route Tennessee. In fact, Michigan sends the Volunteers to their worst loss in NCAA tournament history. Again, Novak leading Michigan with those 14 points, 10 rebounds. You gotta wonder if this is Bruce Pearl's last game as Tennessee Volunteer head coach, especially after this 30-point crushing yeah, somebody said this was Michigan. an 8-9 game. <laughs> right, it was supposed to be, but the score does not indicate that. And next up for Michigan, very intriguing matchup, likely with Duke if they beat Hampton, which most people think they will. By the way, so much. We'll get either the Wildcats or the Tigers. It is a early five-point lead. Now make that six-point lead for Josh Pastor as he goes up against his former program. Played there, assistant coach there, now the head coach of the Memphis Tigers. Michigan, all over Tennessee, to say the least, 75-45. That 30-point loss for the Tennessee Volunteers. Tying the mark for the biggest tournament loss in the history of this Tennessee Volunteers program. Down by four at the half. Second half, not even close as Michigan goes on a 42-16 run. Big story in this, Bruce Pearl, his future. Tennessee Volunteers, there's obviously a lot of questions to be answered. The athletic director, Mike Hamilton, said coming into the tournament that decisions about Bruce Pearl's future will be made after the NCAA tournament. The tournament run is over for the Volunteers. Tobias Harris on the far right, 19 points shut out in the second half for the Volunteers as Michigan gets their first tournament win since 1998. He's joined by Melvin Goins at the microphone for Tennessee. Let's take a listen in. The beginning of the second half. Well, we just didn't play with no heart out there. I mean, Michigan came out, made shots, and... We just did a terrible job of trying to cover them, and on the offensive end, we rushed too many shots, and you know, basically just quit. Uh, Tom Welburn, WBFT Television in Sanford. This is for Tobias. You had an excellent, excellent first half. What were you able to do in the first half? You were not able to do in the second half. You know, first half, I was uh, getting the ball in my positions and just, you know, making plays from there. Second half, they started to, uh, you know, double down in the pub. First half, you heard Bruce Pearl saying that he thought his guys played well. Josh Bone inside. Tennessee had the lead at that point. Well, Michigan took a little bit of momentum into the locker room. Darius Morris right before the buzzer goes off, putting Michigan up at the half by four. Wolverines, ridiculous in the second half, outscoring the Volunteers 42-16. to 16. Tim Hardaway Jr. And then behind the back to Stu Douglas, a 30-point loss for the Tennessee Volunteers. We just heard from Bruce Pearl live at the podium there in Charlotte, North Carolina, said the plan was to come back to the hotel tonight, get ready for the Duke Blue Devils, but a lot has changed for the Tennessee Volunteers. We were talking out here as we listened to that press conference, and there were definitely two uncomfortable moments. First off, first comment from Tobias Harris was that the team quit. 
And then the other moment was when Pearl was at the podium just rattling off the things he has done well, from graduation to attendance. How did those comments sit with you, Coach? Well, since Tuesday when uh, Mike Hamilton made this statement regarding Bruce Pearl, he is a high-energy, high-motor coach, but since Tuesday, he looked like a beaten man. The, the worst thing you can ever say to a player or call a player is soft. And the worst thing you can ever say about a team, the worst. Tennessee Volunteers, Zach Novak, one of the lead guys, 14 points, 10 rebounds for the Wolverines. Uh, right now it's a great win. We're going to go back just like we do after every game and learn from it and see what we can do better and uh, get ready to go for whoever we're playing next. Uh, it feels good. Like Zach said, we're looking forward to, you know, keep it going. Um, it's definitely up there in terms of how, you know, how good it feels to, you know, get a win like that in that kind of fashion. Um, I think it just, you know, shows how well we stuck together when, you know, other people don't believe. We don't listen to that and just, you know, come together and play Michigan basketball the way we want to. And uh, we just want to keep it going. Matt, your teammates talked about how important that first half stretch was. Can you tell me your emotions? Uh, I mean, I think right after the three-pointer, you had the steal and the layup. What was kind of going through your mind? Um, I mean, I was just uh, excited before the game, really excited to play. And um, it was my first tournament game. Uh, and just we executed the game plan, and Zach threaded a few passes um, on back cuts. And um, Darius found me wide open for my shot. So um, it was just we just went on a run and um, play great. Take two more questions for student athletes. Front row. Uh, this is for Matt. Um, I think I think it's probably pretty obvious that Tennessee you know, prepared a lot for guys like Darius and Tim. Uh, do you think it's possible that you just slipped through the cracks or how do you think you were able to penetrate um, throughout the first half? Um, I mean, we just we worked a lot uh, during the week on their pressure defense, and um, you know they're they're a long, very athletic team, and um, just we, we everyone cut hard, and we were all getting open looks. So it just, just had a lot to do with our execution. Last question up front yeah, for Darius. Um, why why did the offense uh, sort of stagnate so much at the beginning of the game, and how are you able to work through that? Um, I just say uh, you know those first uh, four minutes. Or first eight minutes, you know, you get used to each other's style of play. Um, uh, a couple of, of times where we uh, didn't execute as well as we wanted to, you know, in terms of uh, making them hard cuts because they were really pressuring up on us, and uh, sometimes it was just over dribbling. But uh, once we uh, got into the flow and uh, you know didn't let the pressure affect us, you know, we was able to run our stuff, and uh, you know our stuff is designed for if you pressure up, you know, try to get some good looks. Looking at the West Region, second round matchup set. It's a familiar one. It's in the Big East. Cincinnati and UConn, earliest Big East opponents have ever faced each other in the NCAA tournament. Something the selection committee tries to avoid, but with 11 teams from the conference in, it's kind of tough. You know who's really tough? Kimball Walker, Jim Calhoun. Glad to have him with the Huskies.